It's mid-August, we're on a goat hunt, and this is actually the earliest we've ever hunted goats. I'm expecting, you know, this a summer cape on these goats, and you know, it's not gonna be this big woolly animal like you get in October. Walking through here, it's just been bush bashing, but I've seen some bear sign as we've been moving and come across this tree, which is obviously, uh, you know, Grizzly's been using this as his own personal scratching pole and maybe a number of them. But you can see it's literally just wore down the grizzly that runs this valley. Certainly letting everybody and every other bear in the area know that this is kind of his territory. I don't see any scratches up the tree, so he's really just using this as a rubbing post more than anything. Obviously there's good sign, there's bears in the area, so we have to be, you know, gotta be alert anyways. But that's kind of neat. It's a lot greener, it's a lot lusher right now, and the weather is not supposed to necessarily cooperate over the next few days, so we could be in for anything. We've got six days of food, and um, we're just gonna work our way up this valley and see what we can pull out of the hills. watching this goat for the last you know five or ten minutes now and it's really difficult to tell what it is it's bedded down and with its horns against the black rock behind it it's very challenging just need it to stand up and you know move around a little bit it's getting to that time of the evening when they should get up to feed so hopefully I have the ability to get a, a better look at it than, than I'm seeing right now it's not super wide though eh a little breeze helps a bit, eh? We're starting to lose light, so we're gonna camp right here. In fact, we're in between two goats. We don't see them right now, so it makes sense to camp right here. They're probably just feeding before they bed down for the night, so we might as well do the same. I moved away from the camp a little bit just to cross the valley a little bit more just to get a better angle on this goat that we were looking at last night. I picked him up right away this morning. Just before we went to bed last night, we'd lost him. He moved off into the cliffs and we couldn't see him. So um, now he's back out and he's not very far from where he was. He's bedded down. So the angle on this side should be a little bit better. Put this into perspective, last year, 14 total goats were taken in the Yukon by residents and non-residents. So if you compare that to say sheep where there was 260 or moose where there was 700 taken. It's not giving us anything. Our goat population is not huge. Um, I'm not saying that it isn't strong, but we definitely focus on trying to harvest billies and leave the nannies on the mountain to reproduce. We're just gonna step away from camp and we're gonna head up valley. We're gonna leave the tents and everything here. So I've been watching this goat to the west up on the hillside. I think it's a pretty decent billy, but I've also seen two goats here up the valley. And what I wanna do is just get up the valley and see if I can't get a look at those ones from a little bit closer just to make a good judgment as to what they are. It's a really difficult thing to do to walk away from what you think is a decent billy to go into the unknown, but that's what I'm gonna do right now. Here in the Yukon, it's legal to take both a nanny or a billy. Um, the only thing that you can't do is you cannot take a nanny with a kid. So I think that goes to show some of the, the difficulties in judging 
these animals in the field. water in this country this year. It's just been so much more water. It's been like raining almost every day this summer, which is so unheard of. So the lakes are high. Obviously waterfalls are raging. And it's a wet bush bash. Goats just feeding away, head down, whole time. Yeah, there's no indication that it's a nanny right now, but I'm also not seeing any mass or large horns now that it's giving me a bit of a turn. Could be a young billy. Just spent the last hour glassing this goat up in the basin and really high, actually, almost to the top of the mountain. And I don't think that that's what we're looking for, so we're gonna continue to move up the valley see if we can't get an eye on this goat that i saw last night i haven't seen him all day today but the mountain rounds like this so we have to continue on up the valley a bit and if we can find him great if not what we might do is head back toward camp and really get a good look at that billy i was looking at this morning walking through this stuff like 200 yards is like a kilometer it's just mush and big rocks and there's no stability. Yeah, I'm kind of hunkered down behind the rocks right now. Can't really glass because my binoculars will just get wet looking up. Kind of just waiting for this to pass. And it will pass. Who knows? Maybe that's when the billies will show up. There's two nannies, a juvenile, and I think another juvenile billy, or just a young billy that's up high. There isn't anything up there that, that we're looking for, and I haven't been able to find that single goat that was out here, but who knows, it could have been one of them. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back the way we came and climb up the side of the mountain and really get a good look at the one goat to, well, to the west actually and um, see what he looks like. And if that's not a goat that we're interested in, we're gonna pack all our bags up and we're gonna come back and we're gonna head up the valley. So we're heading on the way back. We got about 600 meters, turned around, dropped my pack, wanted to glass back there again and right away picked up a different goat way down low and put the scope on it, wasn't a good one. And then two minutes later, this billy comes out of the woodwork. He's in the same spot. He was just hiding all day, he had moved out, and now we put the spotting scope on him and he's a really good billy. I'm pretty excited right now, I can tell you that. So we gotta move quickly and we gotta get over there. It's 3.30, it's not like the day is young, but we still have quite a ways to go and it's wet and slippery and we gotta take our time and not mess this one up. Walking through the bush is just super tough. It's thick and soaked. We just walked out to this creek and it's gonna give us a, you know, maybe a hundred yards or of reprieve, but that's better than nothing. We'll take it, we'll be soaked, but that's, that's not a problem either. We're already soaked. We're actually gonna go past him and go up the far ridge and then move in toward him. It's, the wind isn't perfect for that, but the way that the terrain folds out it makes it look like that's our best opportunity for a shot and also the safest route up because these mountains are dangerous. So this is one of those crazy tough calls when you're trying to produce a television show. I'm about a thousand yards underneath this goat right now and it's raining and it's not scheduled to let up anytime soon. So we're dealing with, with equipment limitations in this situation and 
you know, we're just getting later in the day and I know that without, without trying to capture this on camera, we could go and get it done, but that's not the point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back uh, tonight and get up tomorrow morning, first thing, four o'clock, and start the trek up the valley again and see if we can't find them in better weather and better conditions. This is just so unnatural to be walking away from an animal that you wanna take. 